Hey everyone, James from Build Tune Race here, back in the shop again, gonna work on the burnout truck some more. As you guys saw in the last video, we got the headers all finished up. And now it's gonna be time to start plumbing and wiring it. So I did end up getting the Holly Terminator in, made sure that it ran over for the O2 sensors. Uh, got the new single plane intake on, bolted down, ready to go so I can get all my fittings on it and start running the fuel line from the standalone fuel cell. The little Aeromotive six gallon fuel cell going to run all my lines. I need to pop a hole in the bed uh, to run the lines down into the frame rail. And then also, once I get some of the plumbing done, I can move on to wiring up the Terminator. Everything is right here. I have the main harness in the truck, the three and a half inch screen, the IO harness there, injector harness, the power wires, and then this would be the ECO, and then some adapter that I'm not exactly sure about. Oh, and I actually ended up coming with a O2 button that I already used, so uh, don't need that right now. So that is the plan today. Start building a bunch of lines from the tank up to the intake, and then build the lines around the intake. I have a bunch of my Fergola fittings and everything from motion that I had already got. Here's a bunch of A inline fuel regulator. Need to mount that up still. And then I still have some other fittings here. And I'm also waiting on an order to show up that has a few more fittings that I know I need that I was a little bit short on that I showed you guys in that other video. Just ran through, made a little quick list. Got the rest of the fittings that I needed coming. So that's the next step in getting this thing burnout ready is plumbing and wiring it. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that. So now on top of this ultra nice engine, we got the billet valley cover and we're gonna go ahead and top it off with one of these steam vent kits from Motion. Super popular product that they have and uh, it looks really nice when it's all together. So we're gonna go ahead and get this unboxed and then go ahead and get started on it. So we got everything out of the package. Just kinda, you'll see how it lays out. They actually are labeled from Motion, driver, passenger, front, rear, uh, four of the corner blocks and then a bunch of these fittings. On these fittings, you have AN on one side and pipe on the other. So on the pipe side, you actually can put pipe tape. And then on the AN side, it doesn't need anything because it's an AN fitting. So we will go ahead and start building them out and getting this all put together now. But it should look really cool on top of that billet valley cover. And so it does come with four of these seals that go underneath these here, like you can see there. Uh, and then this will bolt to that and you're good to go. So put those in there as well when it goes in because if you forget these little seals it'll just pull the water out right around here which I've done before and seen done a few times actually. Some blue pipe tape on there and you guys can see it's kind of off shooting at an angle so you just kind of come in and tighten it down till it's pretty much where it needs to angle up to the block. Do that for each corner get it shooting in the right direction. I'll tighten these all down a little bit more and then uh, it should all line up pretty decent. All right, everyone, so I lost the sound here, and I just wanted to show you guys the finished product, and here it is. It turned out really nice, and I also bought this single-plane Holly intake. Uh, these little nubs, though, on the bottom caused a little bit of a fitment issue with the clearance on there. Uh, it's a little bit lower than I thought, but it still ended up working out pretty decent. I'll show you here in this clip that uh, it still looks real good, but it just had to angle it just a little bit to get it to clear everything. This isn't the intake I plan on running forever but uh, it'll work for now. So let's go and get back into it. So this is kind of sucked with this intake and these fuel rails. I think they're a little bit longer than most or whatever. So if you put this fitting on there, it ends up running into the alternator when it's pushed all the way back. And so I even tried clearance in, doing everything I could, but I'm gonna end up needing to get like an ORB to a direct 90 so then it can save that room, which you can still see is gonna be really tight, but that's what I'll have to do to get that to work. So I'm just gonna have to start working on some other stuff from the back forward. So here I have the feed. I ended up going ahead and attaching it to a 90, comes out, made a little white line right there, and the fitting will go about right there. And then it will tuck it, and then I'll end up cutting a slot right here in the bed. The lines can go through there, and then go down and hook onto the frame rail and ride the frame rail up to the engine. So I think this is gonna work. Keeping the filter up here and stuff makes it easily accessible to maintenance and clean and all that without having to mess with all the rubber underneath and then if i zip time it should should ride right here if not i might have to come up with a little rubber mount or something that comes off the tank to kind of support this but i think it'll be all right like it is i went ahead and ran my line out through the bed under the truck and i kind of hung it up in there to where i could see where i was at so i decided to build this line right here little three inch line it's going to hook onto there 
and then go down and I'm actually going to hang the little wire right next to the head and then one line can come over to here and this line will go straight down and then it'll tie into that line underneath but this will help hold the Y fitting for me so then I can actually pull the line up to it and kind of measure where I need, make a mark, pull it all back out and cut it. Alex has the line here. We got this one all finished up. Got some crap on, I gotta clean it off. But this hooks to the fuel tank in the back. This comes up, hooks to a fuel rail, fuel rail in the Y. I went ahead and just assembled it all out of the truck. So then we can just drop it down. I can run it back to the tank because the Y actually sits kind of next to the head right here. So that was kind of the easiest way to just keep it complete. But once that's assembled, really, you can unhook the engine and just from these two fittings, and then they'd hang up against the firewall. So in all reality, having to mess with this Y fitting shouldn't need to be done very often. So we're gonna go ahead and feed it back, tie it up to the frame rail, and then at least the feed line will be all done. The rear fuel lines are finished up. They go right down along the firewall, along the frame rail, back into the tank. Gonna work on the regulator. I ended up getting this mount here for motion. It's part of that kit. and. It will mount this right off the timing cover, but I have a feeling I'm going to end up hitting this right here. So uh, I'm going to need to mess with that a little bit, probably clearance this, but I'm going to get it mounted, get it set so I can see where I need a clearance. And then the return line should shoot underneath the intake, but with those bolts from it being the two-piece deal, it might make it a little difficult. So I might have to bring this over, snake it around something, uh, but I'll figure it out. And then shoot it down with that line to the back with it. And we should be good to go, so we're going to go ahead and get that mounted up right now. So I got this all mounted up, built a few lines here, got those all done. So now I'm building the return line, comes out, goes under the intake, so around, along the frame rail. And thank goodness for a movable vise, I was able to just pop it out, bring it around, uh, finish putting this fitting on. And then I'm actually going to take my air compressor and blow through the line blow it out and then connect it back to the pump. Ended up getting the header gaskets in, remounting up the column, so that is all back and complete. We were looking at earlier all the fuel lines are in, I'll just have to zip tie them and everything, and now I'm gonna work on the trans cooler lines. Um, I had to order a little bit more for how long I'm running it since I'm having it in the bed, so I got some more line in. So we're gonna finish that one and then build the last line, and trans cooler will be done, this will be plumbed, and then we can maybe work on putting the front end on the truck and uh, figuring out the radiator fans and all of that stuff. Alex is working on getting all of the plug wires on the engine. We have this side almost together. Figuring out that not all the plug wires are the same, which some might honestly be off of the Gen 5. We got four long ones, four short ones. Mm, that might be good though. We got something going on here. <laughs> I'm going to walk you guys through how I build a line. I don't have any like big cutters or anything, so I actually just use a little four inch cutoff wheel, but then I have to clean the lines when it's all done. I already have that line done, so I went ahead and hooked that to the trans cooler and then ran it over to the transmission where the next fitting is going to go. So this is my mark here. I'm going to go ahead and cut it and then go ahead and build it. So something that is nice about this nylon braided line is that you can just clip the little ends off right there with some dykes and uh, then the next fitting will go in pretty good. If this was still braided whenever you cut it like that it would fray everywhere and gets to be a mess to uh, put it together. And then how I usually end up cleaning this out is tip this over a little bit, spray some brake clean in there, see a bunch of black stuff run out, a little bit more. And then I'll usually end up spraying from the opposite of the line, air through it, so then it can blow it out as well. And then it's still not the best, but I actually haven't had too many issues doing it this way. But uh, I also have an injector machine, so I can clean them out if needed. I'll go ahead and grab the other line that's already been built. Go ahead and spray air in the side. Watch all the spray clean come out of that end and then good to go. I'll go ahead and put this line together. Go ahead and take the nut off of the AN line. You kind of find your little spot that works out best right here. And then you end up working it on. Let's 
So you guys can see it starts to go on. Just keep working it. You guys hopefully can see that the line starts working its way up into the nut. You just come up and butt it up right to the little sleeve in there. There's a little shelf that you butt it up to. Some of the smaller lines are super hard and then some of the bigger lines are real hard. Like the eights on this one is really good though. It goes together really easy. The six is a little stiff on it, but there you go. So now the fitting is all the way in there. And we will go ahead and insert the rest of the fitting together. I have the fitting here. As you guys can see, the threads. As you guys can see like the threads right there. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of silicone spray there. A little bit of anti-seize on the threads. And then I have the fitting here in the vise. Got some aluminum soft draws so that doesn't mar up this too bad. And then end up inserting this and tighten it together. So there you can see I got some anti-seize in there. Put some silicone spray on the end. I even sprayed just a little bit of silicone spray right in there to go up against the hose. And then we'll push this in, tighten it down. You can get it in a few turns by hand and then once it gets tight use a wrench right here. Tighten it down and then your fitting is made. Just go all the way until this butts up to the nut there. So there's the fitting all done put together and now I can go ahead and install it. Now I've got the lines coming out of the bed there, running along the top of the frame rail, which I'll come up with something probably that will help mount it to the frame rail or tie it to like here, possibly through this little hole there. And then it comes up and then goes to the trans right there. So tranny cooler lines are done. I went ahead and reached back here while I had the zip ties and went ahead and zip tied the fuel lines across here. And now they go up to the engine, tighten everything down and we should be good to go. For that little project, I went ahead and put the trans dipstick, went ahead and got just a low car one. Uh, somehow on the Mazda, I ordered way too short a one, and now on this one, I ordered too long a one. So this is 36 inch, I had to reach it clear to the other side. Uh, so I probably only needed a little 24 inch, I guess, but on that one, it didn't work at all. So I went the longer one here, and now this one's too long. But either way, it'll work, run it over here. A lot of the stuff with the trannies, you usually are swapping fluid out pretty often, so you just fill it to the amount of fluid you know it should have, and then change it out. So usually not too big of a deal on that, uh, but at least I have a way to fill up the trans. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We just went ahead and got all the plumbing done. A few things ran, uh, and a few parts that we know we still need to get everything finished up, but the fuel is mostly plumbed. The tranny is completely plumbed. Trans dipstick is all done. So the truck is starting to come together. In the next video, we will be working on the front end of the trucking at Buck on getting some radiator fans on it, the radiator in it, mounted, battery, and start wiring this thing. So if you guys want to see more of this build, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and share button, and we'll see you in the next video.